I'm very excited to present to you. Uh, he has a whole slew of accolades to his name. I'm going to cut it short in the interest of time. Our next guest is Dr. Benjamin Balak. Uh, he's a professor at Rollins. He has earned his PhD uh, from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and he's worked extensively for this cause. He was born in Madagascar, and he was raised in Israel. Um, Dr. Balak served in the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, for three years, the mandatory requirement. Um, and both his parents served in the IDF when they realized the profound injustice of maintaining the occupation and started working with a few like minds of people uh, for the pro-Palestinian movement. Give it up for Dr. Balak. Thank you. I feel I'm going to be a bit of an anti-climax after all these wonderful um, speeches. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, it's a great opportunity and great event. Um, Listen, I'm a college professor. I'm a college professor, right? So it's, I can speak for a long time, as my students know. It's very difficult for me to speak for five minutes. I spent half the day trying to uh, narrow it down. But I want to say, if you'll excuse my somewhat maybe shameful self-promotion, that recently Jesse and me have started a radio show here locally on WPRK 91.5 FM. Wednesdays 2 to 4, and we're dedicating two hours to Gaza, and it's going to get ugly. That's what we So, if you, know, we deal with the stuff. if you want to, you know, contact us, I post it on the Facebook event group. If you want to say something, suggest, uh, it's kind of an open anarchistic show. It's called punkonomics.org. So, uh, please join us, and, and let's, make it, uh, let's make it interesting. Um, okay, listen, so many things have been said, so here goes. I, the main thing, from my perspective, is the lack of context, right? When you hear people talking about uh, this conflict, uh, whether it's currently what's going on in Gaza or in general. So, all these misconceptions, um, many of the previous speakers have mentioned them already. You know, the facts of what's going on. Uh, how 20th century facts. Occupation, blockade, hunger, sham peace process, brutality, torture, assassination, prison camps, political manipulation. We have no time to go over the details. Um, it was well explained that this is not a religious conflict, and and one of the things that the fact that it's an age-old conflict, so many, so much of that is going on. And as previous speaker pointed out, no, it's not. Um, but I wanted to mention that you know even the Zionists uh, debated this back in 1881, right? Um, even those who, who would disagree with with, with the you know orthodox religious problem um, with it. Uh, right, uh, the Khadam visits Palestine, comes back, and says, wait a minute, we have a problem. It's taken. Right? They took a vote, and they got 20%. Unfortunately, the majority, 80%, won. And that's where the famous slogan of a land without a people for a people without a land started, which essentially is kind of the first chapter in the eradication, erasure of the Palestinian people, um, which is going on. So uh, there were arguments. Um, things could have gone better, possibly, um, but obviously they didn't. Um, right. Um, so there's one. Um, what really breaks my heart, I think, and I want to kind of maybe something that wasn't mentioned too much, is not the rhetoric of, of the racists, the nationalists, uh, uh, the, the fundamentalists, again, on the Israeli side, which is my focus here. Um, it is a well-meaning. You know, the, the nice, uh, liberal, you know, well-meaning, reasonable people who proclaim the so-called balanced opinion and claim that this is a very complex issue and that blame is equally shared by both sides. Well, the history, the politics of this conflict are indeed complicated, no doubt. But the ethics aren't very complicated at all. That has been mentioned before already, too. Um, you know, one side does the, mo the vast majority of the killing and the other side mainly does the dying, a ratio of conservatively 100 to 1, probably more like 180 to 1. Um, Palestinians currently are often uh, blamed for refusing the ceasefire, and there is a ceasefire, and, and I applaud it because the fire ceases. But at the same time, the ceasefire is defined often, I'm not sure about this one, as the Gazans can go back to die quietly in Gaza, while the Israelis can go back to the usual business. Yeah, of, of, of killing on a regular basis. Um, so it's one of those things, right? In Hebrew, shibolet, you know, kind of a fake argument. Um, 
so that's not an option. Uh, I find particularly disgusting these unsustainable, unsubstantiated claim about the human shields, and this was mentioned also, um, on several levels, really. I mean, first of all, this turnaround, right, that it's their fault that they're dying. It's, it's a really ugly, ugly um, um, excuse. Uh, you think, right, uh, should they stand in an opal f open field in front of the IDF? To, to fight? Is, is that what's required? Um, in fact, as some of us surely around here know that a lot of the IDF uses the human shield, Palestinian human shields regularly, and have been uh, proven to do that. But we don't talk about this. Um, and these warning calls before the bombings are little more than a cynical, shameful uh, PR stunt that works uh, on some people. Uh, sadly, no doubt. Um, I said I'm going to be good, and I'm, I, I kind of cut it off my little my notes. But I, I almost think, you know, my, my dad is a Holocaust survivor, and over the years when I grew up in Israel, he kind of kept, you know, it's not so taboo over there. I'll say it, you know, it's not so taboo to make the comparisons. Uh, so a lot of the times he would say, "Oh, I remember that. Yeah, we we went through the similar situation," and. Uh, you know, when villages were raised in France after a resistance attack blew up a train, uh, that's exactly, you could translate it directly. Eh? Same argument. Finally, uh, I want to kind of, a lot of people also in, in, in here in America and the West forget that Palestinians, especially in Gaza, are living in a horrendous economic conditions under extreme oppression. So sometimes they're not perfectly organized. They're not in full control of all factions. Maybe it wasn't smart to kill those three kids. Uh, and, and it's certainly unethical too. We don't exactly know who did it yet. Um, but given the conditions, the pressure, the long-term generations with absolutely no hope, uh, where, where no uh, act of ceasefire, no acceptance of agreement, no openness ever gets you anything but more bombs and assassinations, it becomes um, understandable, shall we say. I mean, a lot of things are said, so I can kind of sk skip a little bit uh, to one last thing. Um, it's all tied up together. In some sense, uh, there's a bit of a problematic considering U.S. foreign policy. We're asking, you know, U.S. to stop supporting Israel. But, you know, if they don't give Israel the money, they're spending it pretty well in other places like Iraq and Afghanistan. So we can't divorce this. Yeah? Um, they're tied together in a sort of an unholy alliance. And, but that is also an opportunity. I'm blaming the United States. Yes, I am on the radio regularly. But maybe it's also the only hope. I mean, if Americans are able, probably no other hope than if Americans are able to take back their country to some extent, right? Reinf reinforce democracy, take it over from the military financial energy uh, complex. Um, it could be a, a, a very uh, important move. There's a change in public relation, in public opinion in America, clearly, slowly, too slowly, but surely, no, no, you know, Norman Finkelstein has been talking about it recently. Um, but of course, policy is not determined by public opinion so much anymore. Primarily, it's determined by money. So it's a very hard fight, and it requires a lot of work and a lot of solidarity. And isn't the slogan of this organization uh, sponsoring this wonderful event, um, uh, you know, uh, the Al-Quds Day, right? Calls for solidarity against oppression and injustice around the world. And I say it's exactly what's needed. So, you know, you're doing it. Um, Give it up for Dr. Balak again, everyone. Give it up.